Okay, so welcome to my session um, about the search uh, API family um, in the 8.x version. Um, my name is Markus Kalkbrenner. Um, I'm Kalkbrenner anywhere on Twitter or on Twitter.org. And um, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the current state of the search API module. Um, especially or what changed or what happened for, for the Drupal 8 version. Um, introduce the ecosystem and give some tips if you want to work uh, or start with the search API. First, a little introduction why do we need search API. Um, I picked an example uh, of a website most of you will know. And what we see here is a search result. Um, I searched for some Drupal books and to introduce the vocabulary to you, um, if you think about how we can build this in Drupal, these books might be entities. The entities are presented using a few and if you search for the books we enter keywords. Um, on the left, you see facets you can use to narrow down the results. You have special filters. All right, uh, on the right top, you see um, adjustable sorts. Um, and these all are modules to build such searches. And that's a little bit of history of the search API. We started implementing yeah, back in 2007 um, a connection to the Apache Solar server. And that existed for Drupal 5, we ported it to Drupal 6, and as we reached the point as a project to port it to Drupal 7, there was a split. Um, one of the contributors decided to do something different, um, a little bit different approach, and to um, create an API that doesn't really depend on Solar as a backend, but works also for different backends. And uh, so Thomas Seidel, uh, known as Drunken Monkey, created a uh, search API in 2010, um, a Solar backend for this, and uh, the Apache Solar project continued as well. Um, but uh, yeah, also in 2010 and 2011, the two, two projects noticed that there are yeah, more features in common than different, and so um, someone created the facet API module to implement um, the facet functionality, which is in common, um, and a project where the configurations for the solar server are shared. So this one I marked blue. And um, for Drupal 8, um, everyone yeah, sit together and made, from my point of view, the good decision um, to join the forces again and uh, so for Drupal 8 there's only search API and the Apache Solar module is gone but some of the features um, persist and uh, were ported to the Solar backend. Um, so I want to introduce the modules, the people behind it um, and what the, what the module does. Uh, on the core is Search API itself. Uh, it's maintained by uh, Drunken Monkey and VH. And what it basically does is it tracks all the content of your Drupal site, um, pre processes it in configurable ways, which is needed for search, and index the content. It also provides a um, kind of, for the developers, an object oriented query language, which is, which is abstracted from the real backend you use. It integrates with views to display the search results. And it comes with an easy to use backend that uh, simply requires the uh, database, which is already present in your Drupal installation. And for the rest of the family, it basically requires all the stuff and the API to implement more powerful things. Um, another backend is uh, the Solar Server. Um, today, mainly 
presented by myself, um, Christian Sascha from uh, Switzerland, and uh, originally ported to AAA by uh, Amatesco. And um, uh, even if I am the maintainer, I can consider it to be the professional backend for Search API because it's uh, faster than the database, um, it's scalable, and um, it's, at the end, it's a real search engine it comes with, uh, which comes with a set of additional features which aren't available uh, in the database backend. And some of these features are um, special tokenizers to, to handle your text, stammers, which are important uh, if it comes to different languages or uh, an example would be if you search for a word in singular and plural form, you get the same results. Therefore, stammers are needed. It handles synonyms, synonyms um, and uh, has a powerful engine for suggestions, uh, uh, like you know from Google searches, where some corrections happen, or people are, um, or Google asks, did you mean something else? Um, it has phonetic filters, like if you don't know how to type a word, but it sounds similar like something else, etc., etc. There are so many features in it. Um, and um, in Drupal 8, you introduced an API um, to enable solar um, service providers to easily adjust it for their own uh, needs, uh, mostly about uh, communication, user authentication, and stuff like that. So we have uh, now uh, ready to use connectors for Acquia platform as our open solar, um, and uh, yeah, maybe others because these connectors are not part of the project. But if you have whatever service provider, uh, usually you get the connector from them. Um, what we also introduced for Drupal 8 to get the developers. Uh, started really quickly for uh, someone who wants just uh, wants to um, simply try uh, Solar. We integrate with Docker, so we support Docker Compose that uh, yeah simply requires uh, one command to bring up your Solar server pre-configured for Drupal. Uh, now one hint: um, Isabel mentioned that error. Yesterday in my session, um, that's something a lot of people who are moving forward from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 are facing. Um, usually, get this error: a class is not found. Um, why does it happen? And I think uh, that should be explained. Um, don't download modules from Drupal.org. Yeah, seriously. Um, that's the way it was uh, in the past, but nowadays it's a little bit more complicated. You have to use Composer. Um, Composer is a tool to orchestrate all your yeah, required libraries, and the Solar backend requires additional PHP libraries, and Composer downloads them for you. <laughs> so nowadays, um, all the control modules on Drupal.org are also installable via Composer. Um, it's a simple set, download Drupal, change in the Drupal directory, and say Composer require Drupal slash and your module's name. And then automatically all dependencies get downloaded. And what's even more important, important the class loader that definitely finds the classes is constructed by Composer, even in the Drupal core. So this is the future way of doing things. And in Search API, we decided to not do any um, yeah, backward compatibility or things like that. There are still ways how you can achieve it to get it to work if you download the libraries manually. But yeah, I simply don't want to explain them. That's the way to go. The other simple thing I mentioned, um, after you uh, run the line of Composer, you, know, you can simply change in your Search API Solar directory and say Docker Compose up, and you have a running server, and that is fine. Or yeah, 
totally configured for Drupal, and you can start working uh, in the Drupal interface, user interface. Okay, next module is facets. Um, as I show, uh, have shown you in this uh, example from Amazon on the left, there were these uh, facets to filter things like uh, um, uh, about categories and Drupal, you have all the author of the content or a date, you can simply clicking around, narrow down the search result. Um, and uh, yeah, that's something you don't get if you build, just build views for your content. Yeah, But if you use the search uh, API and have search results, you all you get these features, and uh, facets is big some, uh, an important module for this. Uh, facets is um, oh, I didn't mention uh, the versions for, uh, of the other modules. Facets is still alpha, but uh, should be beta soon. Search API itself. Um, the goal is to get uh, the first stable release out next week during uh, the DrupalCon. Um, the solar backend is yeah, uh, considered beta at the moment, but uh, yeah, I'm sure that we are on the way for a stable release right after uh, the first stable release of Search API is available. Um, the amount of features or the power of the facets um, depends on the backend you choose. If, uh, that's the same. If you switch to Solar as a backend and not only the database, um, you get more capabilities out of the facets module. An example for facets, um, a colleague of mine found that this was uh, really funny. On, if you look on the left, people who know German, um, yeah, there's a strange translation of an uh, SSD solid state disk. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I think that's a good example to lead to a, a different topic. Um, I, as I searched for examples of this problem, um, I searched for uh, Kuchenwagen on Google. This is the image search on, on Google. Um, in English, uh, this kind of vehicle is called a cake trolley. And uh, then I searched for the same in a store for furniture in Germany. And what I got is this. Um, yeah, obviously I searched for Kuchenwagen, which is printed there, and I got seven results. Uh, but the results only consist of kitchen scales. So what happened? Um, and I will explain it, uh, how to convert it um, <laughs> into a kitchen scale. And um, if you look. First, some explanation. Kitchen means uh, kitchens in plural. Uh, Kuchen in English is cake. Wagen, yeah, you can translate it as trolley. And it sounds similar. Wagen means scales. If you look into the details, there are slight differences. And from a search engine perspective, what happened here is that the German umlaut has been replaced by the character that is available in English. And so the kitchens became the cake. And the same is for Wagen and Wagen. It sounds exactly the same. And you have in search engines, like I pointed out, spell checkers and phonetic uh, filters. And so I assume the search engine of this furniture store, store is not adjusted for the German language. It just uses the defaults you find for, for um, the English language. And so, yeah, that's the reason for this conversion. And uh, in Drupal, we have a solution for that. And that's a different backend for Search API. Uh, it's called Search API Solo Multilingual. Um, again, maintained by myself and Christian. Um, and yeah, it's pretty in the same state as the Search API Solo uh, backend because it's an extension. It just adds the multilingual capabilities to the other um, to the other backend, and uh, it contains all 
uh, the knowledge of the features within the solar server and enables them if and if you um, uh, run Drupal, what this module does is it really transparently integrates with, with Drupal. So if you enable a new language with, uh, within Drupal, um, then um, during indexing, all the required handling of the content is done automatically. So um, if we are here in Germany or in Europe in general, um, I consider this as the most professional backend for search API. Because nobody here will run a website just in English. Um, let's talk a little bit about the features in this uh, backend that come out of the box. Um, the languages we support English, German, Dutch, French, also Italian, Spanish, Greek, Finnish, and Russian. Uh, other languages are supported as well, but uh, for them, we have a default handler, which is a little bit more stupid, but even better than the English default. Um, and uh, we could support more languages out of the box. But um, if you look at this map I did, you can see where the maintainers of the search API family live. And this is most, yeah, we are only in several countries. We are in uh, Belgium, uh, Netherlands, France, Swiss, Germany, and Austria. Um, and uh, it seems like, um, yeah, the rest uh, of the world seems to live very well with this cake trolley conversion or whatever. Yeah. Um, so um, I think, and it, I just can encourage people to provide or to help us um, provide more default configurations for different languages because we simply could not check if they are correct because we are not able to read the outcome. Um, and also a tip, uh, if you work with a multilingual backend, every time you enable a new language in your Drupal backend, um, at the moment you are still forced to upload a new configuration to your solar server. Um, that might change in the future because there's a feature of managed schema in, in, the trooper, uh, in the solar server. Unfortunately, right now it's not feature complete. Uh, once this is done, we could push uh, configurations via the REST API of solar, but at the moment there are missing features. Uh, but the multilingual backend nevertheless helps you. Um, if you click on the get config zip, you get the complete configuration that matches your, solar, uh, your, your Drupal installation regarding all the languages, and you simply put this in the configuration folder. You don't have to tweak anything, it's complete. Um, or you can use Drush, um, and this um, easy to remember um, command, uh, which is a shortcut for search API and multilingual and server config, <laughs> and it puts your uh, the, yeah, config zip right in this directory where you run this Drush command. The module also informs you whenever you change something that you should remember to um, deploy a new configuration to your server. Or at least it should do still in later. Uh, but there are more things. Um, for example, the autocomplete module, um, which is still in alpha, but I think that will also improve soon. Um, if you start typing in a search box, you get uh, um, yeah, recommendations for what you um, for what you might be searching at the moment. Um, and yes, that's also a, a famous feature. And uh, like professors, the quality of the suggestions uh, depend on the backend. Yeah. It works with the database backend. Yeah, it's, it's really it's really usable. Um, but with uh, Solar, you can create more yeah, sophisticated um, suggestions. Um, what else? Um, normally, you only know um, Drupal.org or the infrastructure of Drupal.org. Um, for us, that's not enough because obviously we need Solar to run tests on it. Um, that's not supported, and so therefore we have. Um, 
create an environment on Travis. Um, and um, there we do nightly builds um, of uh, the current development snapshots. Um, and there you can see search results for the main parts of the search API family. Um, as a solar backend, the multilingual backend, facets, uh, and search API. At the moment, the screenshot is from last week. Um, facets is so it's working. There's just one failing test to run on PHP 5. It works on PHP 7. Uh, and what you can see is that we run all the tests, all the integration tests um, on um, service supported PHP versions from 5 to 7 uh, and on solar cores from 4 to 6. Um, and there are a lot of tests, as you can see, uh, in the time that is needed to run these. Um, at this point, that's where I continue. Um, we spent three years on developing the search API of the migration to Drupal 8. Um, yeah, maybe anyway, it took as long as the core uh, required to, um, to get to a stable state. Uh, and these uh, companies or organizations heavily supported um, the developers. Um, maybe because that's my personal view. Yeah, maybe I missed someone, so um, please excuse that. Um, and we had more than 300 contributors just to the search API modules. Yeah, I think that's quite impressive. Yeah. Uh, and also thanks for your support. Maybe someone recognizes his name here. It's really um, small. Yeah, I don't remember my name again. Pardon? I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> maybe someone stole the pitch from me. <laughs> okay, but um, yeah, there's more we need to talk about, or should talk about. Um, I would just want to introduce some more uh, modules you can uh, have a look at. Uh, one is search API attachments, whenever you work, for example, uh, with PDFs attached to uh, um, an entity, or you upload them. Uh, this module is able to extract the data from it and to handle it uh, as, as text and then you can search uh, to it. Um, search API sorts, um, that um, yeah, offers an, yeah, more uh, sophisticated sorts, uh, any combinations and yeah, you have to play with it to, to, um, to, to get the idea. Um, search API pages. As I mentioned, um, the recommended way of presenting search results uh, is integration in Fuse. Um, if for whatever reason Fuse is too heavy wide or uh, doesn't fit, then search API pages is a lightweight approach um, for the search results. Um, and, uh, but I think, uh, yeah, during the last versions, we worked a lot on caching, uh, and um, in, in, the, in the search results, and especially if they are presented via Fuse. So my personal recommendation is go with Fuse, even if it's um, bigger or more heavy wide, it's also more powerful. Um, oh, that's a mistake. Let me have search API location. Um, that's a module that enables um, geolocation sorts uh, or, or searches and uh, proximity searches what, uh, and different kind of stuff. It's still in development mode. Um, yesterday Isabel presented something that already worked. Um, but um, this thing requires solar as a backend, it doesn't work with the database backend. Um, and uh, maybe we will not include it or the support in the upcoming stable releases, but in the next releases, because there are still some things that need to be discussed there uh, regarding data type support and things like that. Um, and also something I want to mention, which is pretty new. 
um, and this is a state of a sandbox project, is the search API solar data source. Um, yeah, that's a little bit complicated to explain. Um, if you look at the um, architecture of search API, there's an abstraction. Um, all the data, where, wherever it comes from, is represented in a data source. So there's a data source for content entities. There's a data source for users. Um, and this module brings the data source for the solar server. What it means is you can attach an existing solar index from a legacy system or wherever it comes from or what you have, so you can search foreign content, content which is not represented in Drupal itself. Um, and um, um, so you have the possibility to use views uh, to display a search result from any solar index. Um, I think it's worth to keep an eye on this module if you have that use case. So there's one more backend. Uh, it's the Elasticsearch connector. I know there is a different module or set of modules to connect to Elasticsearch. Uh, maybe these two modules are in the same situation we had with the Apache Solar Server uh, in the past. They are, they are two concurrent modules. This one integrates with the Search API. Um, it's, yeah, it's, as I mentioned, it's an alternative backend. Um, from my point of view, um, due to the lack of developers, it's, uh, the development is a little bit slower uh, than the solar backend. Um, and um, if you, well, my personal interest is, is, uh, is solar, and uh, both engines use, or uh, Elasticsearch and solar both use the same search engine, which is the scene. And the uh, Lucene uh, project decided that solar is um, the default implementation, yeah? the default server to leverage the Lucene engine. And uh, so for me, it was no question to, um, yeah, to stay with the solar server because it always supports the newest features available in Lucene. Uh, but at the end, it's, it's up to you yeah, to decide. Um, when you start working with these modules, um, there are different possibilities to get support. Um, normally, uh, in the module-specific issue queues, um, and but you can always join the IRC channel. I think, yeah, every time someone is around there, uh, it's Drupal Search API. Um, and what happened also in the past, if you have a bigger project, you want to hire something, I want to, just want to mention that some of the module maintainers are also available yeah, for, uh, for paid services. Um, to have some instructions, I have some links for you. Um, there are some yeah, videos on, on, on YouTube. Um, the first two were created by myself. Um, Mostly about uh, yeah, getting solar working with uh, with Docker um, and get the or how to generate the multilingual config files. Um, I recently uh, stumbled upon this uh, um, nice video from from Jeff Gerling, um, who just uh, took all the things um, and explained how to set up uh, Apache Solar with Search API and the facets and what you can do. I uh, really recommend watching this. Um, and uh, yeah, at this point I can mention um, you need to, um, every time you install a search API or install a backend, um, you need to configure what you need or what you want to index, what you want to search or to, uh, um, yeah, to find there, and what to display. So it's a lot of configuration. Um, and uh, <laughs> I decided not to do um, a demonstration at this point because it's a lot, and we need a lot of time for this. Um, but if you want to start quickly, um, the Search API database backend and the Solar backend both contain an additional module named Search API 
DB default, I guess, or default, and search API solar default. And by just enabling this module, you get everything configured for the standard Drupal installation profile, which means um, content types, article, uh, I think page is the, uh, the second one are supported, uh, fields that are configured on these content type. So you um, simply have a quick start for this. And um, yeah, and therefore I recommend to watch these videos, um, which we could do <laughs> if, if you want to, or um, we spend the time on questions. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that's it. I'm done with my short introduction um, yeah, to the Search API family. And um, yeah, now it's up to you. You uh, did mention the Search API attachment module. Yes. Does it still need an Apache Kiki server? Uh, not if you use a solar server. <laughs> um, it also accepts plugins for some of the PDF extracts and command line PDF extractors. Mm -hmm. So you can use command line PDF extractors specifically for PDFs, but if you want to extract metadata from anything, then it's solar, which has Tika built into it anyway. So if you've got solar, you've got Tika. So or you can use a standalone Tika. Okay. Right. So that, and um, we worked on it last week. Um, we applied, or the, the maintainer of uh, all of the attachments module accepted my, my patches to it. So now it's um, the extractor of uh, uh, solar, which uses Tika, yeah, um, is now used out of the box. So, um, I assume that it should be simple now. So it could work with uh, Microsoft Word, Word documents also? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More questions? Yeah? Uh, are there any recommendations for solar versions or benefits by using the later version of solar? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have the choice, solar 6. Um, solar 4 is just supported because Acquia sponsored some of the development and Acquia searches on form. I don't recommend to use it anymore. Uh, it's not supported by this uh, solar project itself. Um, life is pretty good. You need to watch out. There was a really important change between 5.4 and 5.5. The whole logic of Boolean operations, if you search for this and that, or this or that, was, did completely change. Um, and so, even if it, if it seems to work, um, you get different search results. And um, the Search API 8 implementation or the solar backend deals with it, it detects the version and applies the right logic to the query builder. Uh, if you use Search API 7, the Apache solar modules for uh, Drupal 7, for example, don't use any solar version newer than 5.4. Yeah. Because after, afterwards, yeah, it, it works, but you get strange search results. Um, and if you start something new, use solar 6. Um, except <laughs> uh, the latest version is solar 6.5. Oh, um, and there's a small incompatibility with the Solarium library we use underneath. Uh, we have to wait for a new release. So the uh, most recommended version is 6.4 or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Did I confuse you? <laughs> <laughs> is it saying on, 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 on the Drupal page, like what the recommended version is? Uh, okay. I, I, don't think, I don't think I have internet here. Um, I mentioned it in the release notes of um, the beta 2 release, which is the latest from last week. From there you see it. So, the simple answer is 
if you use triple seven, uh, five or four, triple eight, six or four. More questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, the least search API, we have the facet API. And in Drupal 7, uh, we had uh, a large amount of work to uh, work with uh, views and facets. I happen to maintain a model that uh, 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 marries both of them. What about uh, that in Drupal 8? Will there be some unification? Um, Unification of what? <laughs> the uh, on the views paradigm uh, and the facet API. Uh, um, so I'm not the specialist in facets. I can only can tell you what I know about it. Um, and uh, what facets does is providing blocks. Yeah. And you can configure a block that, that displays. Um, maybe we go back to to. That looks confusing now. Um, oops. Too much. Yeah. If you look on the on the on the left side for um, for the passes, you can yeah. This in Drupal this will be blocks, and you configure a facet. What should it display? Should it display any taxonomy or dates, authors, whatever? And you put it on a page, and a few should be configured as a page, search result page. And um, the block for facets stays inactive unless there's a search result on that page. Um, and using this concept, it, yeah, it totally integrates with, with views. It doesn't interact with the code of views. It just recognizes that search API triggers a search. And then the block or the facet blocks are shown, and it doesn't matter if it is a few or something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Like the right thing are found, and 
Is there a discussion about what is important, what has to be shown first, and so on? And then um, you say something about that? We have a lot of tests, uh, especially to ensure that um, the database backend and the solar backend display the same results. Um, so, um, especially when it comes to this Boolean logic, um, if you simply run a search for keywords, then you mentioned sorting what is on top. Um, then we have different capabilities of the different backends. Solar has more features about sorting, so the result is obviously not the same between the backends uh, regarding the sorting, and the sort itself is configurable. Do you sort by the standard relevance algorithm by solar? Um, you can configure to prefer some fields, for example, if you find a word in the title that might be more important than to find it in the content, or if it occurs multiple times in the content, or if it's mentioned in the taxonomy. Um, you have the power to configure this, what is more important to you. Yeah. Uh, and there's no solution out of the box, it always depends on your use case. Yeah. So if you want to have the there's pretty much working out of the box, and it's, I think it's pretty good. Um, but you, if you want to do something really professional, you always have to tweak it to your own uh, use case. Things I didn't mention, if you have uh, regard or have a look at synonyms or stop words, um, yeah, let's take Apple as a word. In an IT context, there's a different synonym or meaning of Apple if you think about tools. Yeah? And um, so, I don't know what the domain of your web page is, and you need to tweak things to this. And what we offer with the multilingual module is um, um, at least with the seven version, and it will come to the eight version, to tweak all these files, stop word lists, synonyms, and more things within Drupal. You don't have to touch Solar. Just hit this download config button and deploy it to the server, and, it, and you can use Drupal as the user interface to configure all the things. And also, what's new in Drupal 8, everything is now, uh, or, um, is now stored in configs. So you can export it, to deploy it on a different solar server. Um, yeah, do things like features, it's not called features anymore. Yeah, so uh, we did a lot of architecture um, um, changes to support all the latest features which came with Drupal 8. Yeah, you have about, uh, spoken about the third API source module. Yes. Does it include ranking? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess, yeah, but uh, um, from, from my perspective, as maintainers of the solar backend, you can, with, with each query, you can. Um, Decide on runtime uh, how the results should be sorted. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't, to be honest, I don't know the state of the source module, what is now available in the Drupal front end to be selected, and how it is passed through the back end. It's simply too much. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my sample is, my, my, my question is very simple. For instance, if you have a word in a title, it is higher in ranking, yeah. it has more priority than... You don't need boost, uh, you don't need no. source for it, that's the, the keyword you, uh, you have to look for is boost. And you can configure that the title is more important, and you have to configure a higher boost for that in the search API configuration. It's just to, so you get your relevance, you, first you get a relevance score, and then the score is one, and you said the boost of five, then the score is five, and it's higher than anything, um, than something you find in the in the text. And this included in the beginning, in the search API. Uh, more yeah, than you can configure it via the normal uh, administration interface of, of, of Drupal. And you don't need to deploy any configuration to the server because it happens at runtime, at query time. Thanks. Was more, one more question? And you said the log is it recommended to the type of model or to the graph or the best way is composable? Composable. Absolutely. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, 
this. It's, um, I know it seems a bit annoying at the moment, for, uh, but uh, all these things with this autoloader are yeah, too complicated. It's, it's, uh, and um, I already asked people here, and I think this is the way uh, Drupal will move. And um, all this infrastructure is now available at Drupal.org. If you download Drupal, the Composer JSON file in it also and, uh, already enables this source for Composer packages, which, which is in Drupal.org. And yeah, that's the only reliable way to do it. Yeah. One more question. Yes. Um, I noticed that search without highlighting is done in search API. And I was wondering if it, like, it's a feature that is not supported in Solo, or? or yeah, yeah. I, um, um, yeah, I'll tell you something about it. Um, it is supported, uh, and it's one of the strengths of the Solo server, and it's even more better, or it's better than, than anything Search API can do with this PHP code, because um, when it comes to different languages, you need the features in Solo. But, um, this session is not enough to demonstrate everything like that. I just can you give now the keywords you have to look for. Um, the first thing to leverage the highlighting capabilities of the solar server is if you configure the solar server, there's one checkbox, retrieve results or data from solar. If you don't click it, then it works like the database backend. It just returns the ID of the entity and everything else is done in PHP code. That's the highlighting you mentioned. If you retrieve the data from the solar server, then the solar server can highlight it. Um, and um, um, from my point of view, it work, then it works out of the box, even if you are in fuse. But if you experience something else with it. No, it was just a problem with um, like the highlighting of the umlaut, for yeah. example, didn't do the sending, like when you have a um, search result sending. Yeah. That's a question to be at that. So the answer is install the multilingual backend. Leverage it and click the checkbox retrieve results from solar, and then it should work. Well, yes? This is a lot of need. <coughs> you version before uh, you delete the highlighting, you should uh, select, select it in the solar configuration and remove it from the search API. Okay. But now yeah, I have to explain something now. Um, Search API knows the concept of processors. So things that happen to the content before it's stored on the backend, and things that happen if you pull the data out of the backend. And the highlighting is one of these processors, and it's written in PHP code. And yeah, it has less features than the one that, or the processing that is already available in Solar. Um, for solar, you have to disable most of these processors because the features that are already available in solar are more powerful. The tip is to um, enable search API solar defaults the module. Then you get a view, you get pre-configured server, and look at it. And then you see that there are only, I think, three processors used. And I think this is the most perfect configuration. Yeah. Um, and for example, the highlighting processor is not enabled. There's a pending issue, uh, which we will solve when we go to the release candidate. Um, it's yeah, to finalize the recommendation, or we act, uh, actually we will disable processors, and so they are not selectable anymore to avoid these kind of confusion. to recommend the Drupal VM to everybody. <laughs> well, if you want to get to know the composer-based install and many, many other easy features, uh, this is really a very nice uh, virtual machine. Uh, Starting with Bacon up, you have like everything you would ever need, I think, even solar, <laughs> can be automatically installed. Um, right. Um, personally, I use uh, um, uh, or Docker for 
development, but uh, should there are some more. And the video from Jeff Gerling leverages exactly that, and then you have an example of what to do it. It's a Google VM by Jeff Gerling of the own website and it's a different repository. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed. I shared some insights and um, yeah. let's go to the IRC chat or whatever if you have further questions. Yeah, normally we will answer them. <laughs> okay, thank you.